What is up, Ravens Flop? Huge shout out for your support for the 410 Sports Talk. Chance and Glenn are the best in the business. They're killing it right now. They love talking Raven talk. Make sure you go subscribe to their channel. Let's go, Ravens. Big trust. Welcome in, everybody, to another episode of 410 Sports Talk. I'm James Haskell, along with my co-host, Glenn Martin. And uh, we're going to get into an ongoing conversation that's been stirring here in Baltimore uh, and gotten a little more pressing uh, with, uh, you know, one of the Ravens inside linebackers deciding to move on. Uh, so we're going to get into what the Ravens do next to inside linebacker. But before we do, give us a, uh, take a second, give us a, a subscribe. Uh, make sure you turn your notifications to stay up to date with all your Ravens news. And, of course, give us a like if you like the video. Uh, but, uh, Glenn. Mm -hmm. uh, the Ravens just lost one of their sharpshooters. Well, two really with the, the retirement of uh, one co-cap and then, you know, losing um, our, our second star who's also an inside linebacker, uh, you know, to, to I mean, special team star, of course, special team star, please qualify that before. You That's true. That's a different type of star. Yes. You're right. Uh, now, now going, where did, where did he end up going? He went to Jackson? Detroit, I think Detroit, it was Detroit, Detroit. You're right. Yeah. Um, but now we only have three guys under under contract at middle linebacker. So they are Patrick Queen, um, uh, Malik Harrison, and I can't believe I'm blinking on I'm blinking Christian on Welch. Part. Yes, Welch, who's also a special teams cog. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, right. So we've got to figure something out because Malik Harrison just got shot in the leg. Yeah. Well, and, at the end of last season. Yep. Yeah, or and, yeah, and it's he's a later part. underwhelmed all of us. I think with his time on the field, Patrick Queen has his clear limitations as a player and we've had this stop gap with josh bynes lj fort josh bynes like you know mm -hmm. it's just kind of this this uh uh rotating door of players next to patrick queen but let's talk about it is there an opportunity for us here in free agency to fill a need and not just get another old guy well, one of, one of the big guys that everyone wants to get is kind of another old guy, but he's one hell of a good old guy, and that's, of course, Bobby Wagner, recently released from the Seahawks. Uh, he is 31 years old, but still expected to command quite a, a steep price uh, if you want to bring his services to your team. And, man, it, it, it's such a tough call because the, the question is, can they make it happen? Mm -hmm. Would you know? Would they be able to structure a deal that doesn't – um, you know, cause I, I think right now, if you look at the cap after the, the, the hits from the Marcus Williams deal, the Michael Pierce deal, and then the Morgan Moses deal, I think they have uh, almost 7 million, like six and a half million in cap space, which, you know, a good portion of that is going to be used towards the signing of the, the, the rookie class when they're drafted. And then of course you always have to have some kept aside for the, the, you know, for the injuries that knock on wood, hopefully won't be as bad as this past season, but they are obvious and they're, I mean, they're inevitable to have injuries. So you got to have some money. So the question is, can they get a guy like Bobby under mm -hmm. this limited cap? I think they have more opportunity, you know, as the cap continues to rise to maybe put some backloaded years in there, but they got to have some cap hit in the initial year. So Bobby's the one that everyone wants, <laughs> but he also is the most expensive of all the other options. So I, while I'd love to see him in, in Baltimore, I don't know if he's the, he's the the ultimate guy who gets here do you have any other guys that might be a little less expensive that, that are still available yeah i do um and and one guy kind of jumped off the list at me because i remember when he was in cleveland and and him having a good season and that is joe Schobert. uh but you know as of recently joe Schobert, if i'm not mistaken he ended up going to jacksonville and then found his way to pittsburgh and hasn't really performed too well since then however he's only 28 years old He's still a free agent. And look, this goes for Bobby Wagner as well, but maybe not as much. Every day you stay out there, your price goes down. It just is the way it is. Yeah. So I think that the thing about Joe that could, eh, could make them a good fit as far as him and Pat is that it could allow Pat to play in that instinctual, you know, 100 million miles an hour type role. Um, and, and then, you know, I think a good person next to him is like a Zach Orr type who is a tackling machine, a guy that's going to be able to um, do some managing of the defense uh, and help Pat make some calls, being a more veteran player uh, and recognize some things, use him as a sounding board, things like that. So I think that could be another fit uh, mm -hmm. as well for the Ravens. He's obviously made his way around the AFC North. 
So the Ravens are familiar with him. So I think that also helps with the scouting process. But that's another name that that might be a little less expensive than one Bobby Wagner, no, significantly less expensive than Bobby Wagner, mm-hmm. and uh, more reachable for the Baltimore Ravens. What do you think about that name? Yeah, I mean, he's a name that I think a few years ago I'd be pretty excited to see him come in. He struggled as of late. And yeah. so, but at the same time, you kind of got to take a little bit of a risk if you want right. to uh, bring a guy in. And that, the, the idea is to get a guy with high upside and that you hope. Uh, can live up to that upside because if you, it, the only one who looks to be the guarantee here, if you look at the remaining free agents, a guaranteed guy that can come in day one and make an impact at that spot is Bobby Wagner. So the other guys you're hoping can either play like they once did in previous years or to break out finally as they come here to Baltimore. That's really the two choices. And he is um, three years younger than Bobby. He is. Oh yeah. No, no doubt about that. Bobby's one of the old heads in the, in the free agency, but substantial hmm. difference in their in their play mm-hmm. and last year i believe bobby wagner did set a career high in tackles so it doesn't i don't think <laughs> he's not slowing down anything. he hasn't fallen yeah. off the off the edge just yet um another familiar face on here uh, a familiar name of course is lj fort who i i think is the most like uh he's the most what, what, what word am i looking for i think he's the most likely likely there it is he's the most likely to come back but he is coming off a pretty you know, substantial knee injury, and he is 32 years old, although he hasn't played as much football as some of these other guys above him. He's still 32 years old coming off of a pretty major knee injury, so that one's that one's kind of a question mark. There's some other guys. Alec Ogletree you know, is, is a guy who kind of jumps out off the page who's had some decent years. You know, But there's not a lot out there. That's kind of the summary of it all is there's not a lot, a lot out there. So the question is, would the Ravens, be willing to go into this season without any of those, you know, bigger name guys. Maybe they, excuse me, sign a guy who who can play some special teams and get in there, um, if need be. More like along the lines of a Christian Welch and what all he is, you know, what he already is here. Yeah, and then and then address it in the draft, which I don't think they would do so in the earlier rounds. But it, maybe I'm crazy. Is there any chance that they go? Nicobe Dean or, or or a Devin Lloyd out of Utah and, and take one early. Yeah, I don't I don't see that. <clears throat> but you never know. But I don't I don't see that. I wonder if this year is the year where like the safety net is gone. Right? It's like Malik, Pat, like we drafted you guys to make this thing work. Mm-hmm. Make it work. You know, however, it would also be unwise in a lot of ways to not have a contingency plan. Right. Well, yeah, but it's so hard. It's like, you know, how do baby eagles fly? Not with parachutes, right? They no. fall out of the nest and mm-hmm. they fly or die. Like that's the scenario. And most of them fly or else we wouldn't see eagles in the sky. Man, I'm rhyming a lot. Fly, die, sky. My uh, goodness. <laughs> yeah. By the way, I haven't seen an eagle in quite some time. What? Maybe I'm not you, looking. Maybe I'm just yeah. not looking. You know, but like... point being, I think that. <laughs> It could just be the year where they're taking the young guys, similar to kind of what they're doing. I think they'll end up doing with the wide receiver group to say, look, we need these young guys we've drafted to eat. Like they need to step mm-hmm. up, show us they can do it. They're, we need to give them the opportunity. We don't need a vet guy. Like we got guys in the room. Let's get it done. And I, I wonder if they're feeling that way about those three. Um, and, and so to me, that just would be another reason why LJ Fort makes sense because you add him to the room, but he's not like, oh, well, LJ is the starter next to Pat. You know what I mean? He's just a rotational guy yeah. uh, that can also give you a lot of value on special teams. So I don't know if that makes sense. I think yeah. that that could be what's happening. Yeah. I mean, I think that they could possibly address it in the draft, but they have to get a guy at least. A fourth has some, guy. You need a body. Exactly. That has some experience of, of playing in the league, whether it's starting or in more of a reserve role. And that, and, and there's a, you know, there's a bunch of guys out there that you could look to, but one last name I'm going to throw out there that is a possibility who could be, and I, you know, it, it's amazing how things change really quickly. And so I'm hoping that my list is as current as, uh, you know, as possible. But Jayon Brown uh, was most recently with the Tennessee Titans. He's 27 years old, so still relatively young guy. Um, and you know, he's had some issues where he's missed some games. But I, I think that it, that's another guy you could get maybe a good value. He's a former fifth round pick. Um, and, and maybe you now you get something out of maybe he plays his ba- best football, uh, once he gets here in Baltimore, mm. but uh, either it all comes way, down to the numbers, right? 
yeah, and either way, there's still a ton of holes. So it's like, how much do you really want to invest in this when you already invested a first round and third round pick in a recent draft yeah, that was supposed point. to fix this spot? So it's like you're always weighing those options. And anytime you sign a free agent, it's kind of like admitting a little bit of failure um, as a drafter, you know, because you're 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 kind of submitting that you didn't fill that hole. Uh, yeah. With the many drafts, especially when you're in Baltimore, when you have all those draft picks, the fact that you're signing free agents says that you probably didn't nail uh, a few of those draft picks along the way. So something's got to give here at the inside linebacker spot, but I, I think it's going to have to be a cheaper option. Yeah, I'm with you 100%. I think we agree there. Um, either way, though, I we know this. If Eric DaCosta finds his guy, maybe not in the first, second round, but like if he, the guy that he has just had his eyes on or Joe Ortiz mm-hmm. have had their eyes on, entire draft process and they have him rated a lot higher than a third or a fourth round and he's sitting there in the fourth round yeah patrick queen or malik harrison better be on high alert because you know they're gonna give they're gonna they're gonna make that pick so mm-hmm. it'll be interesting to see how the ravens address it but i agree with you i think they gotta sign someone before the draft so they're not dependent solely on the draft let us know guys if there's any sneaky names would you want to see Bynes and lj back one of the two back uh like you said glenn i think it's it's fair to say Bobby Wagner is most likely not going to be a Baltimore Raven. Uh, we'll just hope he doesn't land in the division or in the conference. Uh, yeah, so, so let enough, us know. What, enough of players have come to the AFC. Yeah, and, and yeah. So let it let us know what your guys' thoughts are, and we'll talk to you soon.